You know, something about the DSM rear tail lights, I don't like it that much. But honestly, the Evo X tail lights, dude, how cool would that be? We got a box today. It says Fragile on it. It might be something important, might not be. Honestly, you guys just probably have to stay and watch. If you guys haven't seen part one and part two, you should definitely go watch it because honestly, you have no idea what I'm doing right now. But we're gonna, gonna take this lower column and install it under that dash. That being said, welcome to part three of our Toyota Prius install in our 2G column. In order to make things simple, we're gonna install the lower 2G Prius column first. And if you guys use the factory bracket, you should have no problem bolting this up. Now, if you somehow manage to install this without mangling your hand, you can kind of see where it hits that HVAC that we talked about in the last video that we had to cut. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the 2G column and slide right on and then bolt up using our factory mounting bolts. You know, I'm not too worried that it's not gonna fit because honestly, we tested everything and made sure that all of our measurements was spot on. Now it should just slide on to the shaft. Might have to turn it a couple times. After all six bolts are in, you guys, honestly, it looks like the factory location doesn't look like it changed much, which obviously it didn't. That's the cool thing about using the factory column. It looks almost stock, but when you look down there, yeah, there's a pretty big motor, but I mean, that's where all the magic happens. Now we can take our measurement from the 2G rack to the slip yoke coming off of the Prius column. So what I mean by measuring it, you're gonna measure it right here. And that is where you're gonna take your first measurement and you're gonna take it all the way up to the Prius slip yoke, which and again, you're gonna measure it in the exact same spot, which is right here. Now I got 10 and three quarters. Now we gotta go transfer that to our new reading. Now again, you guys, that measurement is gonna determine where you mount this. Now, I went ahead and got the whole steering assembly and I shifted it as far forward to the driver as possible. That way we can kind of get a little bit more room. To make this install super easy guys, we're gonna be using the Prius slip yoke and pretty much 90% of what comes with it. Now just remember, from eyelid to eyelid was about 10 and three quarters. Now obviously where the bottom goes into the steering rack, it bends. Now I already did that measurement and it's about a half an inch. So we're gonna go ahead and add another half an inch to our 10 and three quarters, which is gonna give us a total length of 11 and one quarter inches from eyelid to eyelid. Now what's nice about this steering slip yoke is this part is going to pretty much slide right onto the bottom of the motor. And obviously this part should be sliding onto the 2G column. But of course, the one that came with the Prius does not fit the 2G DSM. We actually have to take off the slip yoke that connects to the 2G column from the 2G column and obviously transfer it over to this guy. Now unfortunately, we have to press out these little tiny U-joints and if you guys haven't pressed out tiny baby U-joints, it is kind of a pain and I'll kind of quickly describe how to do it real fast. So I use a digital caliper to measure the U-joint caps to make sure that when we take everything off, we can transfer the U-joints the into our 2G. Now, crazy enough as it sounds, you guys, they are pretty much the exact same measurements from the Prius U-joint to the 2G U-joint. It's insane, it's, it was like this is meant to be. However, as far as the length goes, it is about one millimeter too long or too short, but honestly, one millimeter, you divide that by two, we're gonna have half a millimeter of difference on each side, whether it be too long or too short, I'm not too sure yet. But honestly, I mean, that's not gonna be a big deal for that. That's gonna be perfectly fine. It's like this was made to fit in a TSM, it's crazy. Now for the 2G and the Prius, now they're gonna both have these little indentions here. You can kind of see one here, one here, and one here. Pretty much before you try to take this out, you have to make sure that you try to press those or grind those down because if not, it's gonna actually damage the U-joint and you don't wanna do that. So just go ahead and get a hammer and try to flatten those out as best as you can on each side. That way when you press it out, it ain't gonna damage it. So next you wanna make sure that you have the collar that slides right over Prius shaft. Now we're gonna use the U-joint and connect it with this guy. Now to install this, be very careful because those needle bearings will come out. I suggest putting grease on them to help them not slide around. Now you're gonna to wanna to press, now you're gonna to wanna to push the U-joint all the way to the top while getting your cap and slowly and softly making sure that it's 100% in.
We have 11 and 1 quarter inches from eyelid to eyelid, so that's what we're gonna have to focus on next. Now when you measure from eyelid to eyelid, we're actually about 11 inches and 1 half. Now that's about a quarter inch of what we're off, but as you guys can see, we're kind of maxed out, meaning it can't go back down more. But you guys can see we still have some thread left here. So what we're gonna do is just grind this part flat, make it match what's already there, and then cut off about a quarter inch off the top. about three quarters of an inch off of the shaft honestly with it maxed out you guys could have probably went a full inch as you can kind of see there but pretty much this is what we're looking for honestly we're 11 and a quarter from eyelid to eyelid which is exactly what we need honestly this is slide right in and it's fully adjustable because well we got it now we can slide back and forth so you guys can kind of see what's going on. I have the bottom slip yoke connected to the steering rack, but when we go up to the 2G column with Prius, well, it's still too long and there's no more to cut. So unfortunately, we gotta take off the whole steering column to slide that little shaft on. Oh well. Almost fits like a glove. Just remember that the 2G rack has a bolt like this and make sure that it gets installed. And uh, it's gonna be kind of difficult, but you can kind of see where the hole goes down there. Progress feels great, you guys. So I got everything bolted up. We can turn the steering wheel. Wheels are moving like they're supposed to. So now all we have to left is to pretty much install the module, which I'm gonna mount it back there behind the radio, wire it up, and uh, then we can talk about what's in that box. Now, as far as the module mounting, honestly, you guys, it doesn't matter where you mount this guy, as long as you have enough slack where you can bring over the, the actual harness. I mean, the less cutting and splicing you have to do, the better. Honestly, just mount it in two points. That way, it doesn't vibrate or nothing. This will see up to 60 amps. So you wanna make sure this is secured and it's not gonna be bouncing around. I was only about maybe eight inches short. I just gotta connect all four wires, no big deal. So next up is the key on source. Now the module does need a 12 volt source key on. So it actually comes from this connector here, which is the black wire. Believe it or not, it's not the white wire. 100% it is the black wire, which that's kind of odd. We're gonna hook it up to the cigarette lighter 12 volt key on source, which I believe it's the blue wire. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So with your voltmeter hooked up, you wanna be on the blue wire. With key off, you should have zero volts. Now real fast, before you tie into anything with the car, make sure you hook up a voltmeter to be 100%. By turning on the ignition, we should get 12 volts. And we do. Obviously when we turn off, it should go away. Which we're gonna go ahead and use that because well, it just makes sense and it's super easy. can hear me they're like jackhammering outside in my yard no idea what the heck they're doing but anyways so this cable is going to be the pain in the butt because one side goes to ground honestly we're just probably going to mount it to the side right here and make sure that we have a good connection the next side is a power supply this one needs to have a 60 amp we're going to use an 8 gauge wire all the way from the fuse box that's inside the engine bay unfortunately and then route it inside the cabin change of plans we're actually going to be installing a inline fuse holder on the battery it's going to be rated at 60 amps 8 gauge wiring it's going to run perfect honestly i was going to hook it up to my fuse box which in case you guys ever wondered how i did my wire tuck my fuse box is actually located way down here in the fender well i don't know if you guys ever knew that but honestly i didn't want to mess with that it's just easier i have another adapter that we can add it to it's going to work perfectly fine now we're going to go ahead and splice this in run it inside the cabin over to our module and hopefully wire this up all right, so you guys, we're pretty much finished. I went ahead and installed the ground wire. I connected it here. I grinded it down, made sure it's getting a really good connection. Here's more or less the module. Now up here is the power supply that's coming from the battery. The bottom one goes to the power supply to the motor. 
The next connector that's down here, this one actually connects to the 12 volt source, which I have it hooked up to the cigarette lighter. Last up is a very bottom connector. This wire goes to the motor as well. I had to extend the harness about eight inches because it was just a little bit too short. Now, I like where I mounted my module. I don't have a radio. Honestly, I'm probably gonna get a carbon fiber flat cover here. I think that's gonna look really, really cool. But honestly, guys, I just have to hook up the battery and dude, we're gonna test this thing and see if it actually turns, which, oh dude, I'm so excited right now. All right. I have the key in the on position. The battery is off right now, but I just wanna show you guys. So, as we're sitting here, I can't even for the life of me turn the steering wheel. Ah, it's barely moving. Honestly, I'll probably need two <laughs> hands to turn this thing. Look, if we're not going like five miles an hour, like trying to turn the steering wheel, it's almost impossible, you guys. And that's kind of a why I'm doing this. Now I have a fire extinguisher just in case if something was to catch fire. And uh, here it goes. Well, so far so good. All right, so you guys, dude, I'm so freaking nervous right now. Oh man, I don't know if this is gonna work. I hope it does. If it doesn't, we'll figure it out. All right, so we're gonna turn the key on. Oh man, this is, it's always nerve wracking whenever you do something like this. Oh, okay, ready? Fuel pump's on. Fan's on. I heard it click. All right, we're gonna, let's give it a shot. I feel it kinda, no way. Bro, no way. Oh my god, you're kidding me. <laughs> I have power steering. Oh my god. Dude, one finger. Oh my god, it worked. Yes. Dude, look at that. It works. This is so cool, you guys. Now obviously I still gotta put everything back together, but oh my god, dude, I'm so freaking happy. It works. Totally recommend it. I feel a little bit of vibration when it's at idle. Not quite too sure. I still gotta do some research. Just make sure everything is in good working shape. Obviously I gotta retorque everything, probably recenter the steering wheel, but you know what guys? I think we're done here. I just gotta wrap all this up. And uh, that being said, man, I think we should really, really celebrate and uh, go check out what's in that box. So you guys are aware, I actually have two kind of big surprises. One I can't talk about, but the other one, obviously we're gonna talk about right now because uh, it's big. This thing's like 50 pounds. I mean, it's, it's just so freaking heavy. And if you guys don't know what this is, uh, pretty much there's gonna be a lot of big changes to the channel. One of them is in this box. This thing is massive. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and check out what's in the box. And what do you think it is? And uh, oh man, she's a girthy. God dang. Oh sweet Jesus. Oh. That's a big one. No, I'm just kidding. It was an empty box. Just kidding. Look at this thing. Yup, you guys guessed it. It's a turbo, but it's not just a turbo, you guys. Look how massive this thing is. So this is a ball bearing G42 1450 series. Now this is a 79.8 millimeter turbocharger, pretty much capable up to 1400 plus horsepower. Now honestly, we'll probably never max this thing out, but it is gonna be replacing my Hallset HX40 6767. I always wanted to try out this brand. It's called Pulsar, and I've been reading a lot of reviews about this thing. And what's special about this turbocharger, you guys, you kind of see this outer ring right here? Well, that's called a T51 mod. And if you guys never heard of a T51 mod, I guarantee you, you most likely heard them on the really back in the day, older Supras that had the HKS turbocharger running a T51. Remember how they used to spool up and it used to make that enormous loud whining noises? Well, that's what a T51 mod does. It gives it that loud whining noise, so I'm super happy that we got 
got it for our GSX and I'm going to be really, really excited to put this thing on. So if you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like the video. It shows YouTube I'm here. And uh, like I said, we have one other big surprise but I can't tell you about it yet, so you just gotta wait and see. So, just like that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll see you later, bye. I don't think you guys could actually describe what's going on right now. This thing is just so massive, dude. God, it's so big. And it has three inch intercooler piping. The intercooler piping that I have now is two and a half inch, so we're definitely gonna have to be doing a lot of upgrades. Honestly, probably chopping this off if we can't make it fit with our radiator. There's gonna be a lot going on with that. Eventually, we're gonna be installing it, but first, we gotta run a nine second pass with this car before we replace that turbo.